show YouTube, so I'll start with the intro there. I am going to shove it in the computer so you can see, see my head in the corner and I'm just playing, I'm sorry. I just have, I've, I've got to go out today, I've got a lot on. Right, so, this episode, Point of Light, episode three of season two. Uh, yeah, where do we start? Right, right, let's go with negative bit first. The Klingons really get to me. You know, and if they're gonna use that as an excuse to say why they're fucking different, I'm not having it. What the vault? It, I mean, there's a remark. There's a remark, right? Uh, with Burnham and Vok on the hologram communicator that uh, the Klingon. It's a pre-war thing or some or after. They're all growing the hair back, so then they're gonna look like the Klingons. We know, right? And 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 I am trying to ignore the whole thing of canon. Do you know what I mean? Because <coughs> there is a lot of lo loopholes in the Star Trek canon anyway before they divided it with Kelvin timeline and all the other stuff and the prequels that are, uh, you know, right, it, it's just it, it's just a moan, right, I'm going to moan for about a minute, uh, yeah, the Klingons, I, I, I can't get, they just annoy me, I'm sorry but they annoy me. But I do like Laurel. <laughs> I, 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 I like her character, I do. But it, I, I just want them to have a bit more... Well, they don't, I don't know this episode, they had a bit more personality. But, like, we've got Vok, who were a Klingon, turned into a human, uh, Merge, uh, you know, whatever they did to him. You know, and uh, don't forget that tr uh, Trouble with Troubles or whatever the original series. They had uh, him done at uh, uh, the uh, secret agent Klingon spy who were done up as a human. Uh, don't get me started on all this, right, because I get really annoyed about it. But where's the human Klingons? Uh, where's the human Klingons? Where's Kang, Kor and Koloff? I mean, they were all human when they were battling it out with Kirk. Don't get ten years from now in this timeline, you know. Right, that's it. No more moaning about uh, all that. Right, I know Enterprise, I always found Enterprise answered the Klingon thing with being human beautifully, you know, with the genetic disease and all that that affected him, but it phased out in the generation. That sort of worked for me, uh, and I think really they should be going with this. Do you know, you know, but apparently it's meant to be legal. Uh, so I've read there's meant to be some legal thing about the Klingons or something. I don't know, right. Right, the second thing before I get into the episode, I, there's loads of stuff all over the internet saying Discovery's going to get cancelled. No, it's not. Right, and, and Picard said it isn't going to happen, and, and, and the Star Trek franchise is this, and, and that it's not getting cancelled. Right, it's not, right. As far as I know, I did dig around on this, it's not getting cancelled, right. I don't want it to be cancelled, because if it gets cancelled, we get no Star Trek, do we? Right. And hopefully Picard, the Picard series will be the one that will save everything because we'll, as Trekkies, uh, we've followed it for over two decades and longer, we'll get the new stuff and 20 years on after the Dominion Wars, which really they should have gone with this from the beginning. Right, I'm getting a bit fed up of prequels. Right, right, that's my mom on, on the canon thing. Right, so it's not getting cancelled as far as I know. Right, this episode was a good one. It was very up and down, right? <coughs> uh, but some things do get answered. So we find out Spock with his mysterious family. He's got more brothers and sisters than the bloody Waltons that are just turning up out of nowhere. You know, we've got Cybok, Burnham, Spock, his mum and dad. I mean, what's next? Uh, you know, Darth Vader as Spock's dad. Right, so let anyway, carry on. <laughs> right, right. So we start the episode off like, it starts off quite routinely and uh, we're getting to the thing of the Klingon political situation. Yes, we do see a D7 cruiser, the building him. Still think they should have gone with Axe and our idea. It's all coming out now why Paramount stepped on that. Because, I mean, you know, there's, like, the whole thing of the war and that. Right, so we do see a, a holographic recreation of the D7 of, built by the unified houses of the Empire, the Torchbearer. Right, Vok, 
uh, Laurel, they're like weird love stories carrying on. She's Chancellor, but obviously not Klingons like they're all backstabbing each other and beating each other up. There's all that going on and there is a, a coup attempt against her. Uh, it comes out she's got a kid, it's a Vok, so uh, kids are a bit smaller than normal Klingon children, so it's obviously there's about some human DNA in there. And uh, she's kept it secret, he finds out, because they're all treating him like shit back on Kronos because he doesn't look like him, but he is a bloody Klingon. But wasn't he like a white Klingon or something? Wasn't he like, he was like, didn't they look down upon him as a Klingon in, in original, uh, when it started, they were like somewhat weird about it all, weren't they? So, we're getting Klingon politics. Now, that's quite nice. It's nice to see life on Kronos. It is quite enjoyed that. So that builds up later on in episode as we go. And then it sort of we jump onto the ship and we find out about Spock killing three of his doctors as he's done a runner. Starfleet's classified this case. Uh, the angel, the red angels, uh, have been like certain people have seen it. Spock's been in contact with it since he was a kid. Now I thought I'd bring in the preservers in because why, I'll say why. Uh, do you remember when they took that church from uh, World War Three, with all them survivors and put them on that planet, Terra Prime or whatever? Uh, I thought, because that's the type of thing preservers would do, and I thought, it's, it's the Red Angel preservers. I don't know, that's me. Just, it would be good if it is. I know, but because a lot of them mentioned the original series in TOS, isn't there? With the asteroid deflector and that, and they did move certain beans about and it has been in the books the preservers so i don't know but it's obviously some kind of entity uh tilly's getting into training to become a command officer on the bridge she's running about because they've got to do all this stuff uh saru's running that uh and she's seen her dead friend popping up and she and she's on the bridge and she can't do her job properly because this thing inside her uh, which came from a spore uh, is like latched onto her but it, obviously it's going to be there for a purpose she thinks she's going mad and and, and she starts arguing with captain but she's not she's arguing with her, what's the vision she's seeing <coughs> and burnham we find out more about Spock's family, it's like Dynasty now, uh, that she said some horrible to Spock years ago when they were kids and so they're not close and he won't forgive her and he split off because every time, I, I mean the lady that plays Amanda, uh, Spock's mother is fantastic, I like the guy that plays Sarah, I love them too, she's great, but as she says every time they try to get together as a family reunion, none of them turn up, they're all too busy, it sounds like my family at times, it really does. Uh, so like, we're all sort of like, they're all sort of busy, right, and uh, and it comes out, and her, her and Burnham have this chat about this Red Angel thing, you know, when they're going through Spock's, like, because she, Amanda stole Spock's medical records from the Starbase, and uh, they tell Captain Pike, I do like Hanson Melton as Captain Pike. He just, I, I, I'd be quite happy if he were captain of the ship for the whole series. Do you know what I mean? I think he's a bloody great actor. He's just right for the, he's just right. He's like a sort of Kurt Picardish sort of, well, he's his own person, but he's, he, he's on the job, but he's got, he's got, a, he's quite, uh, as a captain, he has a lot of fun in the job that he's approachable. And I like that about him. So he's a cool captain. Uh, but he's not in it as much. He's like, he's took a bit of a back seat. It's more about the crew this episode, a lot focused on the Klingon thing. <coughs> so we get out, we find out that Tilly is, like, there's a fungal spore inside her. And, uh, Stan makes one of my favourite characters, they figure it out and, and it's a fungal spore from the mycenial network of mushrooms or whatever they're called. Uh, it, it latched, do you remember end of last season it latched on, that, that spore latched on to So we're getting a connection from that that part to this one, which I remember that spore and I thought, hmm, that, mm, do you know what I mean? That's sort of interesting. And uh, but and then I forgot all about it till I saw it today in the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've had a lot of coffee today. So, like, we're, we're moving along. Uh, we jump back to Klingon politics. Uh, you know, uh, like, we find out she's had a kid to Vok. It's, it's different. Uh, so, but the House of Court is plotting to make its move. Uh, when uh, Vok beat 
caught up, uh, he put this paint on him or something, but there were like bugs in it that you could listen in. So like Carl was listening to the big secret about her and the kid. Because she tells uh she she tells that he got a kid, he's freaking out about it, it's a beautiful little kid. And uh, so, like, obviously, Carl strikes, kidnaps the kid. He's got this thing, to, he's, and he forces Laurel. It turns up and uh, kills one of her, her uncle or something. And he's got the kid as a hologram saying, "You'll meet me in this place. You'll sign this document, make me ruler of empire." So they turn up, and obviously, there's like this big. She turns up with Vok, and there's a big punch up. Uh, they're all, but all butchering each other, and then like he sort of like Cora. It's I wonder if he's connected to Cor, one of the later commanders in Kirk's time, House of Cor. I assume so. He suddenly they're all beating each other up, and then suddenly when they've all like killed everybody, he paralyzes them with like a paralyzer bat life type of thing, right? <coughs> and they're stuck there, and then he, he gets a fingerprint and signs this document on the on the tablet, and 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 then suddenly, suddenly out of blue, this like bean appears with like this floating sentry firing phasers and disintegrates everybody, and then and then. So and you're like thinking, who's that? And it's Georgia, isn't it? Michelle Yeoh. And like suddenly you're on edge of his chair and you're like, yeah, finally, you know, finally. It's, and, and he just says, what's it? It's the Empress, you know, I'm Philippa Georgia. So she vaporises everybody. Uh, and, 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 and I'm thinking, yeah, this is what, this is getting better now, right? Because, I mean, I think the Klingons will grow on you over time. Uh, you know, I am really trying here with Klingons, right? Right, I'm, like I said, I've moaned about the cannon thing. I'm sorry about that, but I had to get that in. I just felt it were important. Uh, and then suddenly, with, like, the whole Vok thing, and, and Giorgio, she, he calls her Empress, she says, no, she's um, Captain Philippa Giorgio or something, right? And she's got this battle suit on with these, like, floating phaser sentry things, and then she finds this bubble thing, surrounds Carl Lorel, kills her, and and then she's like, there's this discussion, and she says to Laurel, like, you know, we want you to stay as Empress of the Empire because, uh, <coughs> you know, keeps the peace and it serves our purposes. And she says, you've got no choice. And she says to her, would you kill your husband and your kid for the Empire? And, and Laurel pulls the sword out and that, and she says, I'm only asking. And then you go into this whole thing. So we jump back to Discovery, and we're getting to find out what this entity is talking to tell. It's a fungal thing that obviously is going to have a great, great big purpose in this later on. They suck it out of her, trap it. And that's it. And then suddenly we're back on Kronos, which again, by this time, I'm sort of accepting Klingon, getting more used to them. Uh, the, reds, the reds are too bloody big for me. No, stop it, no more moaning about Klingon. So we're back on the uh, Kronos. She, suddenly she pulls out Voxed. <laughs> she she like, seriously pulls out Voxed, right? And, and she's hanging it over, over this cliff and she's going, I have sacrificed him because the Empire comes first and all that. It's like Queen Elizabeth the first thing, you know, when she married Britain, right? Well, it's like that, it's like this scene, right? So she got his head, right? And then she drops it in, in, in over lava pits. You're not clinging on to that, they're all into lava pits. I, mean, I wouldn't want to live there. It looks the right bloody depressing place, right? So then she pulls out and then suddenly she's given a big speech and all Klingons are all stood there like, you know, and then suddenly she pulls out a kid's head, she's got it in her hand, little kid's head, and she says, you know, and then she and then she puts it back in thing like, you know, she got rid of the kid. And she says, I will not be known as the Chancellor anymore. I will be known as the mother of the Empire, which I found quite interesting. Now this I will like by this time. Because this episode it bounced up and down in certain parts. She were like yeah, okay, right, and then suddenly it ups itself on the scale, it suddenly it, it were up in itself, and you're like, yeah, bloody hell, and like, so I'm watching it, and she got this head, uh, and, and then she said, I'm going to become Mother of Empire, and then they're all chanting, you know, the Duke Klingons, right, and uh, we're getting to, uh, you know, we jump back, uh, you know, to the ship, 
flying away and it's going, you know where that Klingon monks are? Boref for summer, you know where like Worf went? And they beam the kid down and uh, it's to protect the kids, you know, give it a Klingon upbringing. But uh, you've got Vok there. We obviously, we knew he wasn't dead. They'd replicated his head with his DNA, so they could, you know, and then sacrificed it and, and kids as well. And uh, it's Section 31, they've got their own ship. Obviously, with more advanced technology. Because when the Empress went in there and assaulted everybody, I mean, she was using some really crazy technology. And they've got this beautiful ship, you know, Section 31 ship, and then with Bald Dead from end of first season, like, talking to her, and she's great. But there's a great scene when he's holding kid like Vogue, and she sort of comes up just for a minute, just for a couple of seconds, you're like... She gets all maternal and he looks at her and she pulls that stoic face. There's going to be an affair between Vok and Giorgio, I'm telling you. And, and it just finished on that score, there was a bit of a chat about recruitment. She said we can use Vok, so he's joining Section 31 now and he gets the badge and I'm going to definitely buy one of them badges. You know, brilliant. So, incredibly, yeah, I'm going to get, it was a bloody good episode actually. You know, I, I just, it was just uh, at the beginning, I was sort of, oh, here we go, we're getting back to, you know, come on. But all in all, it was a really good episode. There were plenty of there to, like, munch at, you know, when you were watching it. Especially the Klingon stuff. I know what I said at the beginning. It was just the first couple of minutes that Klingons really, like, they don't have any personality, do they? Lorel's coming out with a bit more personality now. And one that Klingons did manage to laugh. Ha, ha, ha. You know, he sort of laughed. And which I thought were interesting. Well, are they going to start making them like Martok and Garon and all that? You know, today is a good day to die and I'm laughing about it. And I thought, well, they could be on to something. But I mean, if they're going to use that as an excuse, where well, they're all growing the bloody hair back. I'm not having it. That annoyed me. That, that really did. But, so where are the human Klingons from Enterprise? You know, where are they? They can't be just thought they're all their mothers, want they, who Kirk met? You know, so anyway. So that's it anyway. That's what happened in this episode. That's the basics. But like all of it, I, I Discovery, look, you've got to give this a chance, guys. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I mean, I've got to admit, I'm not going to jump on a bandwagon, but sometimes watching a franchise for a long time, buying all the stuff and going to conventions and <coughs> wearing up bloody uniforms and all that. I mean, you, you know, you feel that you are entitled to something from it that how it should be right. You do develop a... A sense of history was something you love deeply, you know. And when they go off track, it was like Doctor Who in last series. They totally screwed it up. Do you know what I mean? It had nothing to do with her. I didn't have a problem with her being Doctor because it worked with Missy as the master. So I'm open to that. It was just the story writing was shit. And, and don't get me started on that New Year's Day episode. But, like, do you know what I mean? It, they really, like, killed it. And, and as a long-term fan of something you've grown up with and you've got a passion for it, you get a sense of, not entitlement, but you, you do have a right to a point of view of how you feel on it, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's been a big part of your life through good, bad and low times and positive times, you know. Star Trek has been there through a lot for me, through breakups in relationships, through meeting people in friendships, family. It's been there. Like, I used to watch my two brothers. We used to watch Star Trek videos. I mean, I, they were younger than me and I used to make them watch them, but they didn't mind eventually. They got a knowledge of it and, you know, they'll thank me for that. Well, they do. I even took them to the Star Trek club when they were down in, when I lived in Leeds. But they got a taste of it so that, like, I could, at least I can speak to my brothers and I could talk about Star Trek. But I have a lot of friends that are into it and, you know, I, I just feel after all money was spent and, and where we're going with, like, we want something that's going to be like, how do you say, we set a line, don't we? to quality and writing and we know what it's about the franchise i think sometimes we know better than the bloody producers you know sometimes it might be worth them asking the fan base what do you want but like i said the good points of this section 31 i'm fascinated by it. i love section 31 since deep space nine couldn't get enough of them and you know, they're a massive global interplanetary uh, organisation that's underneath the Federation line. You know, they're there, and that's what I love about them. So there's going to be all the dirty, dark side of it all, oh, and I like that. You know, it, it's time, because the Federation's not all that wonderful that it, there is a darker side to it, and I like that, and that's great. Uh, the Klingon thing, if they can get the, the Klingon thing off in the right way, 
like with the introduction of the D7 and all this today it, it's I think they could be onto the right thing and they did sort of get Klingons a bit more personality they had a bit of woof with them today you know so right in this it was a good episode I think for an episode three it were good uh, Spock's family I mean I'm just waiting for the next member to pop up which no doubt you know because Amanda said all four of us where's bloody Cybok you know the long lost brother that went emotional and lost the plot and cleared off looking for Shakari you know he should have been mentioned but again don't let Canon there's I think there's a time to jump in with Canon at some point you know but Obviously, we've read the book, like I've said all this. But yeah, it was a good episode. I actually quite enjoyed it. But it's, as soon as Michelle Yeoh turned up, I was moved towards Edge of Sea. She, I love that woman. She's amazing. And I cannot wait for her Section 31 series. Right, and guys, tomorrow I'll be doing Orville. Uh, I know I'm three episodes behind. Obviously, I've been so busy. But tomorrow I'm going to be doing three episodes of Orville review all in one. Next, I'm going to be on live Sunday at 7 o'clock. Hopefully, yeah, I will be <coughs> to do a show. Next week, I'm at the side fi ball in Southampton so hopefully I should be back for the Sunday night to do another live broadcast if not there'll be a lot of convention footage put into a movie so it's ready to be watched and uh, yeah that's it so hopefully some other guys I've got things to do I've got a course tonight to do uh, so I will uh, yeah I will see you tomorrow on Oval right guys have an awesome day uh, keep warm and if you don't need to go out, don't go out. Just keep your eating on, stay warm and watch Discovery. Oh, Star Trek. And have a nice cup of tea. Live long and prosper, brothers and sisters.